Look at these three words written larger than the rest, with a special pride never written before or since. Tall words proudly saying, we the people. Hi, CPOC, and welcome to another legal update with the Lex Rex Institute. Today, I've got some really exciting news to share with everyone. And that's that we filed our lawsuit challenging the Voter Choice Act on March 7th. So we're just getting started on that. Now, we could never have done this without the generous support and contributions of both CPOC and many of your members here tonight. My thanks, no, no words. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, this lawsuit would not have been possible without you, and we are incredibly grateful and very excited to tell you all about it. And we're actually bringing it on behalf of a few folks who might be some familiar faces to everyone. Uh, one of them is your very own Michelle Morgan, who ran for Central Committee of the Republican Party of Orange County, 74th District. We're also bringing it on behalf of Dr. Stephen Bean, another CPOC member who ran for Superintendent of Schools for Orange County, and Raul Ortiz, who ran for California State Assembly, actually he's still running for State Assembly, District 64. So if we're challenging the VCA, what is the VCA, or Voter Choice Act? Well, that's a modification to California law that counties can either opt into or they can decline to opt into. Uh, Orange County was actually one of the first counties to adopt the Voter Choice Act. And what it does is it provides for 10-day early voting, same-day registration, and most importantly for our lawsuit, allows voting at any number of vote centers within a county that has adopted the Voter Choice Act. So what does that mean? Well, you might remember how you used to go to the polls at your specific precinct that would be assigned to you. It would say it on your ballot. You go to one specific place, and you could only vote there. Well, now, if you live in Orange County, the way that it works is you can go to any vote center in the entire county, and you're allowed to vote that way. Well, that creates a problem. What is that problem? Well, California Elections Code Section 19205 states that no part of a voting system shall be connected to the internet at any time. This becomes a problem when it comes to poll books. So you might remember back in the old days when you'd go and vote, uh, there'd be a physical paper poll book in front of you. And you'd say your name, you'd say your address, and they'd find you and they'd check off your name, you'd sign next to it, and that's how they kept track of who had voted and who hadn't voted. Well, how do you do that if there's more than one physical location where people are voting? There's got to be some kind of live, real-time update of those poll books. Otherwise, there would be nothing keeping someone from going to more than one poll center and voting more than once. Actually, the code, the part of the elections code that forms the VCA, actually says in section 4005A4EI, states, the vote centers provided under this section shall have an electronic mechanism for county elections officials to immediately access at minimum, and then it says name, address, date of birth, and a variety of other identifying characteristics. So it's required within the VCA to have real-time updates to electronic poll books. Does anyone see a problem here, especially with that code section from earlier that said that no part of the vote system can be connected to the internet? Now, keep in mind, this real-time electronic updates is absolutely integral to the VCA. You cannot have this law without it because there's no way to maintain these vote centers and prevent duplicative voting. But clearly these two laws conflict. So what do we do? Well, under centuries old common law, in fact, you can even find this in Blackstone, who was sort of our founding father's Bible when it came to all things legal, says that if there is a mandatory provision and there is a discretionary provision and the two conflict, the mandatory provision controls, and you completely lose the discretionary provision. So here, as we mentioned, which one's mandatory and which one's discretionary? Well, as I said, counties have to opt into the VCA. So clearly that's the discretionary provision. The mandatory provision is the one from Elections Code Section 19205, saying that no part of the voting system can be connected to the internet. So what we've done is we've filed a lawsuit on behalf of those three folks I mentioned earlier, asking the court to invalidate the Voter Choice Act because of this contradiction. We think we're on solid legal grounding for this. And, well, who are we suing? Well, few folks. Of course, Don Wagner and the other members of the Orange County Board of Supervisors. Bob Page, who's responsible for administering Orange County elections. And of course, Shirley Weber, Secretary of State, and one I'm personally pretty proud of, Gavin Newsom, because he's responsible for enforcing this whole thing. Now, we're still in the process of serving these folks with process, so you may actually be hearing about this case before some of them do. 
And again, we're still in the early stages of this case. We are optimistic about it, but it's not going to happen on its own. The early stages of the case already have been fully funded, and we're already hitting the ground running on this. And that's thanks in no small part to CPOC and a few of its members. But we will need to keep this case funded if we want it to keep going. We're fighting some real heavy hitters here, people that have far more resources than we do. Now, we're more efficient, government likes to waste money, so we think that we can get a lot more done on a lot less, but we are going to need continuing funding on this case. If you would like to, feel moved to, or otherwise are able to fund this case, please do so. You can visit our website, that's lexrex.org slash donate. And I think we got an option there where you can code it to say, uh, VCA challenge or, or something to that effect. Uh, we can't promise it's going to go there or else you lose your tax deduction, but we're pretty good about that. Uh, to my knowledge, I think everybody who specifies a preference for donations, we do end up honoring that. Uh, but again, thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you for your continued support, and we are excited to bring this challenge with you. That's all for this month, and we'll see you folks again in April.